the weather starting to feel a little bit more like fall. Powerful cold front coming through Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, and out on the East Coast, we've got this outgoing nor'easter brushing Massachusetts, Connecticut, and Rhode Island with some high winds. In the wake of that, ridging coming down from Quebec and Ontario, bringing 40s and 50s into the Great Lakes states and the Northeast. And then on the West Coast, looking a little bit quieter, large high moving in from the West Coast, 1026 millibars on that, located right here, and that's driving a prevailing northwesterly gradient into the south and central plains and the Rocky Mountain states. Taking a look out in the Pacific, another weather system off the coast of Oregon, about 400, 500 miles. That's likely going to take a sort of a north eastward track and affect mostly the northwestern states, Seattle, Portland. And then taking a look up in Alaska, fairly quiet. Don't see any wrapped up occlusions, frontal systems, anything like that. Just a couple of decaying occlusions in the Gulf of Alaska and the Bering Sea. Still have a lot of warm air tied up in the Nunavut region, above freezing with rain at this hour, but a little bit up to the north we pick up 20s. Still, that's a bit on the mild side. Fairly quiet out in the Atlantic until you get way out there towards England, and then dropping down through the East Canadian coast, 30s and 40s, and then we hit that system there that's near the Canadian Maritimes. A quick look at the weather hazards shows things are quieting down there in the northeast, but taking a look at Texas, red flag advisories, wind advisories, and high wind warnings. And there they are, strong winds throughout much of West Texas. The way we read these wind flags, these sustained winds, are in black. So if right here in Abilene, we can see 30 knots sustained. And then we count up the red ones to get the gusts. So this is going to be sustained 30, gusting to 45. Now, of course, with Aviation Weather Center, we can just click on the plots and read the winds that way. Junction, gusting to 31, Abilene gusting to 43 knots, and Amarillo up to 51 knots with blowing dust. And if you want to convert knots to miles an hour, just multiply by 1.15. That gives us winds gusting to 59 miles an hour at Amarillo. We are dealing with some severe weather problems in Louisiana and Mississippi with this squall line working its way eastward. There's the tornado watch we have in effect right now covering New Orleans, Baton Rouge, and southern Mississippi. There's that squall line at the time we're recording this, making its way through the western Gulf of Mexico and central Louisiana. That should be in the New Orleans area within a few hours. And then working our way further up to the north, looks like the northern part of that line is moisture starved. Don't see as many convective elements in that part of the frontal system. There's the Lake Charles radar at about 8.20 this morning, showing a couple of cells out ahead of the line. And these are certainly supercells. You can see the hook echoes right there, a series of them, and probably another one further back to the west. Those supercells move to the northeast through the Golden Triangle, Beaumont, Orange, and up towards Lake Charles. And you can see that curl right there. That's very impressive. These are certainly storms that are rotating. The main MCS further out to the west, that's a cold pool driven system. And eventually you're going to see it swallow up these cells as it surges to the east. Most of the tornado reports we had this morning were in this region right here. And what we're left with at this point is pretty much a rainy MCS with straight line wind damage for the most part, but you can see this bookend vortex 
Let me roll that back. See that developing right there with that? Well, that's what we called the line echo wave pattern back in the old days. That gets its start right here with that bow echo. You can see a series of them, and those end up evolving into that bookend vortex structure. And very likely, there was a track of some straight line wind damage as that surged to the northeast. And what we're left with at this hour is that right there, weekly cap cells. And let's check it out on the slide L radar. And there it is. You can see warm air advection cells get going out ahead of the line. And then as we get towards the last 30 minutes, the line is approaching from the west. So these cells here will probably bear watching. There could be some potential with that. And then most of the hazards back here should be in the form of rain and maybe some isolated wind damage. And the other thing that might be a little bit concerning is that we don't have really a solid two-dimensional line. What we have is discrete cells. Now that can favor some of them going briefly severe with circulation, brief tornadoes, that kind of thing. It is hard to get those going when they're embedded in these MCSs, but any of these discrete areas of cell formation, those will have to be monitored as well. So let's take a look at the hemispheric upper air pattern. This is 300 millibars up at about 30,000 feet. And what we see, the North Pole located right here, the long waves, there's probably one right there, another one here, another one there, and the other somewhere in here, there could be a fifth, but I'm not sure. But with a four wave pattern, it slowly progresses. Now the wild card in all this is we have a high amplitude pattern, you see? that north-south transport of heat. That tends to favor the development of, I should say, a breakup into vortices. And you'll certainly see that like here and maybe here as we move forward. So yeah, we get one developing over the eastern US. Here's another one in Canada. And once we get those vortices going, that can tend to create blocking patterns. I'm not sure if we're going to get blocks, but it looks like later on in the pattern, about a week from now, some split flow starting to develop. There's a southern stream there and a northern stream in the Hudson Bay region. And where's the polar vortex? I don't really see one. It looks like it's actually retreated back to the North Pole. Don't have a very well-defined center on that. Things are really moving. We do see late next week, that's what we're looking at here, this is 200 hours out. We've got this big built up ridge in Canada, a lot of troughing off the west coast and troughing on the east coast as well. And in between that, a zonal flow. So it looks like we've finally kind of shaken out the vortices and we're starting to get some of these medium scale and smaller scale troughs moving through the flow. And that'll help bring some fast changes to the U.S. weather pattern as these little waves come through in 24 to 36 hour intervals. Then we get this fast flow coming onto the west coast at the end of the period. This is 260 hours out, but that points to more problems out west, maybe for California as well. And elsewhere, looks like just kind of a variety, a smorgasbord of weather throughout the rest of the U.S. and southern Canada. So let's have a look at the satellite. This is the East Coast, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, and offshore, that's the surface low, that's a wound up occlusion quite deep there. I think that was, what, 960 or 970 millibars? And you can see some convective elements. Those are cumulonimbus towers there. And looks like a few of them up to the north near the warm front, or I should say the warm conveyor belt where it wraps around. And we run that forward through the afternoon. There it is moving out to sea. Very well developed circulation. And that brings us up to the current time. In the wake of that, a vast sea of cold air advection stratocumulus. That's moving offshore, picking up heat over the Gulf Stream waters and destabilizing. Let's look at that on the infrared imagery. So this goes all the way back to yesterday morning. That's going to be Tuesday morning at... 
8 a.m. Eastern Time. So what do we have here? We've got a Bear Clinic shield. That's it right there. That's associated with the warm conveyor belt flowing northward. The fronts are going to look something like this. Cold front, warm front, and then the occlusion, if I can find my purple. Yeah, there it is. Wrapping around back towards the central low. So this is the triple point, the warm sector located in this area here, the warm conveyor belt flowing around on top of that, and then the cold conveyor belt coming in the back side. And the deformation zone back here, you can see some convective elements in that, and the pressure gradient is going to be strongest out in this region here on the back side of that low. And that's the reason we're getting a lot of that high wind up in the northeast earlier today. So again, this is yesterday. On Tuesday, we roll that forward. A couple of strong convective cells going up there off the coast over the Gulf Stream waters. This is going to be about 10 or 11 a.m. We'll roll that forward some more. You can see that surface low, that circulation drifting around up there near the top of the screen, approaching Cape Cod, circling back, and then heading back offshore again. And that's this morning. And that brings us up to the current time. So a lot of that heavier bear clinic cloud debris, that's already pushed well off towards the northeast. And we're left with the remains of the occlusion. And there's very little left to power that. It looks like, to me, that maybe it's just kind of feeding off of the heat over the Gulf Stream at this time. And before we say goodbye to that storm, let's look at the surface map for yesterday. This was about 21Z, which is going to be about uh, 5 p.m. Eastern Time. We run that forward. We can see the wind field start to develop overnight. You can see the winds coming up to about 30 to 40 knots in eastern Massachusetts. We're now up to about 10 p.m., some strong 50-knot gusts showing up there at Providence. Or I should say Provincetown. I forgot Providence is in Rhode Island. And these are the overnight hours. That's going to be about 1 a.m. High winds all night. Looks like about 30 gusting to 45 in Boston. Strong north winds. Picking up 50 knots at Boston around 4 a.m. And eventually things start to subside as we get into the morning hours. Very slowly, coming down to 30, 40 knots, and finally, maybe a bit of weakening as the afternoon approaches. There has been some extensive wind damage, some power outages throughout much of that region. But the good news is it's on its way out. So let's look at the GFS forecast for the week ahead. 981 millibar low offshore this afternoon, and we roll that forward into tonight and tomorrow. This low pressure area in the Ozarks is occluded. You remember that satellite image of the system offshore? Kind of a similar thing going on inland. That's the main Bear Clinic region, the frontal area out there in Georgia, and then we have an occluded front extending into the Ohio River Valley. So that's what we're looking at for tomorrow morning. Still, quite a bit of rain throughout the Midwest. We still have cold air coming down on the west side of that system due to the gradient between that low and the high in the Rockies. And the 540 decameter thickness line also working its way southward. That tends to be a rule of thumb for discriminating between rain and snow. So going forward through tomorrow into Friday, wow, Friday is almost here, another system heading for the northeast, but this looks a little bit weaker. There's the positions on our fronts, and then the occluded front running about like that. So at this time, we don't see a big nor'easter along the coast. There could be that possibility for something to develop in this area here. If I can get my cursor to work right. Yeah, that's the triple point. That's the kind of thing we have to watch. But rolling that forward, it doesn't look like very much development along the coast. Just some heavy rain and 
easterly winds in New England. Here comes another surge of cold air coming south from, that's that Pacific system. Let's roll that back and look what happened there. Yep, there's that frontal system that was on the surface map offshore from Oregon. That moved inland. There it is crossing the Rockies and working its way towards the northern plains. Looks like a fairly dry system, but it is bringing down some cold air. And then by Monday and Tuesday, chunk of air coming southward. A little bit of bare clinicity down there on the southern end. Maybe a little weak frontal system coming together. Yep, not very much development on that. And eventually the cold air just filters southward. And you can see that 540 decameter line coming all the way into the Great Lakes area and the Midwest next Tuesday. After that, pretty quiet. Looks like some elevated storms developing around Dallas for Wednesday. Probably a strong upper air trough moving through that region. And then the next big change, another frontal system in California for the 5th. We saw that on the upper air charts. And this looks like some overrunning. That's going to be isentropic lift, warm air, and I should say warm air advection, and ascent over the western part of this big cold dome. That's what's going on there the weekend after this weekend. And then another powerful system moving through the northern Rockies, slowly ushering in a change to winter. And that'll do it for this edition of Forecast Lab. I want to thank our newest Patreon, Gary Schmeluski. Thank you for signing up and helping to keep this program going. And a special thanks to our established Patreon donors, Frank Borgman, Christopher Kane, James Taylor, Brian Lowe, Keith Franck, Bill Peterson. People like you are appreciated and hopefully I'm thinking maybe in the weeks ahead, we'll give out a few freebies to a select number of the Patreon supporters. Anyway, that's all I got for this Wednesday afternoon. I hope you have a great one, and we will see you back here on Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.